Locked on Syracuse is back. It's Tuesday morning, and we're here for a cup of coffee here on Locked On. It's Brad Klein and Matt Bonaparte, and today it's Syracuse women's basketball under the microscope. The Orange get a big transfer, all that and more right here on Locked On. Let's do it. Our Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome. It's Locked On Syracuse. I'm Brad Klein. He's Matt Bonaparte. And Bones, a short episode today. I called it a cup of coffee. Let's just level with the folks. It's late and we're tired, right? Listen, Brad, you've got it. You've got it good. It is 1230 in the morning where you are. It is 124 a.m. in Connecticut right now. Yeah. How does that feel? It's a very late episode. So all I'm saying to the audience is, uh, we're doing our best we can, so we're giving you 12 to something, maybe 15 minutes today, but we get to bring you some some new content. Women's basketball making its appearance here on Locked On Syracuse. I don't know if Tim and Tyler ever covered that, but the Bones and Brad era definitely will, and it comes with some exciting news. All right, so again, Brad Klein with Matt Bonaparte and the Crookets in Connecticut. And, uh, yeah, if you're on YouTube, you can see him trying to find his roommates here. He also <laughs> There's has, an ant on my ceiling. He has an ant on the ceiling now? Oh, my God. I'm going to try to give you that a spell. <laughs> I'm going to try to give so you a live play by play. He's got an ant in his oh, hair now. I live with an ant now. All right, yeah. My Let's, God, uh, ant. Accept it. All right, just accept it. I lived with a twin brother for 14 years. You can do an ant for 14 minutes while we talk about Syracuse <laughs> women's basketball. So the Orange reel in a transfer from Alabama A&M, Dariana Lewis, forward. And to me, this seems like a really big deal. You know, we're we're thinking and we're racking our, our brains on what the biggest story in Syracuse athletics is today. And I think indisputably it's Lewis. And she's not your typical swack transfer. I mean, she shined for Alabama A&M, but Lewis is going to provide Felicia Leggett, Jack squad, much needed help inside. That was an Achilles heel last year. Well, okay. So think about last year's team. You had a really, really struggling squad. And at times they showed promise like that upset went over Ohio state when they scored the program record amount of points against central Connecticut state. Uh, they played some good games, and then they went on that huge losing streak that was so pitiful. Um, but I think a lot of it was due to the lack of depth, like you're saying. I mean, at the center spot especially, outside of Alasia Styles, there was really nothing there. They had to run a small lineup almost all the time. Uh, and it, it just, I mean, Christiana Carr, of course, was there as well, but she was more of a stretch four kind of player. Um, Styles, like, she had to be the center for that team for pr- pretty much the entire game, every game. Uh, so yeah. when you bring in some depth this season with the player who has played pretty well, uh, an average of double, double last season at Alabama and M hopefully you can kind of be on the trajectory more towards success. And with a new coach in town, maybe that helps too. Well, the funny thing is, so yeah, you mentioned Alicia stylish and she's your starting five. She played extremely well. I think better than most people expected her to play as the five out of position. It's interesting the dichotomy of it because she was six foot three playing out of position, and Lewis comes in at six foot one. She's a forward, but she plays more like a center than Alasia Styles did. There's no there's not gonna be that uh that growing pain and that change of style that Styles, no pun intended, had to go through. Lewis is gonna fit well at Alabama AM. She scored inside, she averaged 18 points. 13 rebounds in 2020-2021, and she made the all-swack second team last year, averaging 15 points and 11 and a half rebounds, good for 14th in the nation. So she fits in, and she is another building block for what Felicia Leggett Jack is building through the transfer portal. A bunch of Buffalo representation where Leggett Jack is coming from in the transfer portal, but also you have Kyra Wood from Temple and Kentucky's Olivia Owens. This is something that you're going to see a lot of from uh, Syracuse this year, and that is sustaining through the portal and building 
through the freshman class because they have those successful those successful recruits and those high level freshmen. But before those players can really shine, you need the the transfers to bridge the gap. Yeah, and don't forget about Asia Strong from Wichita State in that yeah. conversation. The transfer portal brings a lot uh, of uh, height this this time around. So I think Syracuse should be honestly pretty pumped be, uh, because of that. Um, outside of Lewis, like you mentioned, you have Olivia Owens from Kentucky, who's six foot four. So she'll probably act uh, as the center of time. She didn't play too much last season, but you know she should this time around with uh, maybe some more opportunity at Syracuse. So Syracuse also in an incredibly weird spot in the program, right? Quinton Hillsman, he's gone. The abuse that he brought, gone. And they have to try and get by that. And I got to say that Von Reed bridged the gap last year about as well as you could. He didn't have a lot to work with. He had to go to the portal for basically the entire team outside of Tisha Hyman, Juliana Walker, Ava Irvin. Let me know if I missed anybody. Yeah. Um, so you kind of have to, to to give him some credit there. I mean, he had nothing to work with pretty much, and he made something of nothing. They weren't fantastic. They missed the tournament, but they were fun at times. Um, and you kind of have to do the same thing this season and try and build towards success once again of an entirely different foundation. So if Felicia will get Jack in and the past out, I think that they have definitely have a chance to do that, but they're lucky because they get to do it through the new transfer portal. Say this happened four years ago. It's an entirely different look. They're probably way, way worse because they get to use those transfers right away. Now let's take a time out here and talk about bet online because BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. You can find all of the latest sports developments, league reviews and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and major league baseball. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this year. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online is where the game starts. Brad Klein and Matt Bonaparte, we're here talking about Syracuse women's basketball. And Bones, the Orange reel in a big transfer from the Bulldogs of Alabama A&M from the SWAC, SWAC newcomer of the year two years ago, and that is Dariana Lewis. And she was a menace on the glass last season. 15 rebounds per game, good for 14th best in the nation. And this is a team whose Achilles heel was inside and Alasia Styles. It's a new era. She's gone. She is moving on from her collegiate career, and it's a, a new roster, top to bottom. But you have to respect what Felicia Leggett Jack is trying to build here in terms of revitalizing the program. I found the ant. Good. I was. I was I curious. Found I, mean, I was ant. watching you the whole time. So again, if you're not watching the podcast, first of all, you should uh, be good. Good call because we're not really lookers here on Locked On. But um, speak for no, yourself. I will speak for myself. One window of this double box here is, uh, you know, not a sight to be seen. But uh, Bones here is fiddling with stuff while I'm talking about serious Syracuse women's basketball news, and he's just looking for an ant. I have Find trapped it. the ant, and, and this ant is a you speedster. trapped it. Let me tell you what this ant is a. Sp- Speedster. Okay. I have trapped the ant between my Paul McCartney Syracuse concert ticket That's... and my newly acquired Chatham Angler souvenir cup. That's where I've trapped okay. the ant. All but right? I feel like the Paul McCartney. Uh, what did you say? It's a. It's, it's a program. My ticket. Oh, oh it's it was ticket. my ticket. No, yeah. the ticket's valuable. You can't. Well, you it's can't like a paper it. printed out ticket. It's not valuable. All right, all right. But I still wouldn't want to get ant on my ticket. Listen, the end. And what's he gonna do? It's all right. All right. So, I what mean, are you gonna? I mean, what's the end this game? Is, man? This is. I don't think you understand how huge this is for me. That I'm not gonna have to think about this ant anymore. All right, I understand all right. that. But before we completely move on from the ant, we promise the people ten to fifteen minutes on Syracuse women's basketball. We're ten in. We've got about five left. You would think. And what's the end game for this ant? I mean, what is the ant's fate? This is. I, I hate to say it. I'm gonna let the, I'm waiting this ant out, and tomorrow morning I'm gonna open up this cup, and I'm gonna hope he ain't moving. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> That's insane. <laughs> That's sadistic. Just either kill it or let it go. You can't just be like... <laughs> What? <laughs> you think you're doing it a favor? You think you're doing it a favor by just trapping it all night? That's insane. I know it's a late podcast, but it's not that late. The sun is not coming up anytime soon, Bones. That's insane. <laughs> No way. No way. No, no way. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. I don't know why you're making this. It's listen, <laughs> this ant. It's important to listen. If I open up this cup, it's going to scurry out. You don't understand. You don't see the ant, Brad. If I, I open up this it. cup, it is gone. Okay. The- it is gone. It is a miracle that I've trapped this ant under a cup. It's a miracle. It's a true all right. miracle. All right. Brad Kleiner <laughs> and Bones the ant killer. That's insane. Ant torturer is the better better description. That's wild. All right, we're talking, we're talking about I'll, I'll give you an update on the ant tomorrow, all right? Please do. Please do. And let me know if it doesn't make it to the end of the show. Syracuse women's basketball here getting a big transfer in Dariana Lewis. And like I was saying before you trap the ant, uh, Lewis provides the depth that Syracuse needed. And I love that Leggett Jack is not just trying to build her own thing. She's trying to build off of what Von Reed had, which is the problem, lack of depth, and she's addressing it right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, when you compare last year's team to this one already, there are a couple things that stand out. One, the depth, but also how about the star power yeah. in the Asha Fair that's coming over from, from UB? Yeah, well, that's the thing is that typically when you have a new coach and you're building through the portal almost entirely, then the star power is going to be hard to find. And Exhibit A is last year. I mean, they had Crystalline Carr and Christiana Carr and you know, Malaysia Styles, but I wouldn't call any of them stars. That's not going to be the case this year because of what you're inheriting from Buffalo. Yeah. yeah. Um and, and the chemistry is going to come with that, too. So you have that to look forward as well, because Leggett Jack has seen these women play. She knows their styles. She knows what they need to do in the offense, what they need to do in the system entirely. Uh, and that's going to go a long way, probably longer than a lot of people think. So Syracuse, I think, is in a better position than people give it credit. Um, the thing I am not necessarily worried about, but I'm curious about is how is Tisha Hyman going to fare in all of this? Tisha Hyman, a player that likes to have the ball in her hands, likes uh, to be the playmaker. She wants to shoot the shots. She has a lot of confidence on the floor, and I like watching her play. When she's on, she's really, really fun to watch. When she's off, she's really, really hard to watch. That's uh, with another star on the question. floor. I, I understand what you're saying, but I will temper those those fears a little bit because the th- the funny thing about Hyman is that she could take a game over. There, there might be a game where totally. she just has 25 and, and, and she is the X factor. But I actually think that Hyman is best when and I'm going to throw out a name. I'm not going to say it's a comp, but it's a name. And don't don't kill me if you don't like it. But when she plays the Draymond Green role, she is best when she has like nine, six, and seven. And she and those could be rebounds or assists. However, she can do a little bit of everything. And if she she's is really, that Swiss yeah, Army Knife player instead of the Red Dead scorer, that's when she's best. And, and look, this team, like we're saying, the star power is there. They're going to be able to put the ball in the basket. They don't need Tisha Hyman to do that ball in her hand. I don't think that's going to be her role. Her role is going to be picking up the crumbs of what's needed on that given night. Yeah. Um She's a team player when she needs to be. So I think she, and also, is, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe she's probably the longest tenured player at this point. Yeah, at this point, it's Ava yeah, Irving. She was playing there our sophomore not, year. Yeah, so Tisha Hyman is the longest tenured, which is insane. It's crazy. It's nuts. Um, obviously, the circumstances dictating the situation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be incredibly important uh, and interesting for to see what she kind of does on the floor because she's such a huge piece of that offense. And Felicia Leggett Jack is obviously going to use her players in the best way she sees fit. And I don't know what that role is for Tisha, um, but I think whatever it is, she's going to expect to be taking a lot of shots. More Syracuse women's basketball coverage and previewing the season coming up here on Locked On Syracuse. But for now, we we bid you farewell and good night. We appreciate you making Locked on Syracuse your first listen every day. Uh, this will be posted, obviously, in the morning. We're tired. It's nighttime. 
and Bones has Nan to go kill. So good night. <laughs>